Romans chapter 4, I want to read the first 12 verses of this chapter this morning. Let's read it together. Thank you as always for being a part of, of our daily studies together. Romans chapter 4, look with me at verse 1. What, what then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather according to the flesh, has found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credit to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as a favor, but as what is due. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing on the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Is this blessing then on the circumcised or on the uncircumcised also? For we say faith was credited to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it credited? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of the righteousness of the faith which he, he had while uncircumcised, so that he might be the father of all who believe without being circumcised, that righteousness might be credited to him. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of circumcision, but also who follow in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had while uncircumcised. Brethren, I, I want to repeat a statement then that, that I've made before. Man cannot save himself. Brethren, we, we can't earn our salvation. There are not enough good things we can do to cancel out the sin in our lives. And we're going to see in Romans chapter 6 in a couple of weeks, the Bible makes clear the wages of sin is death. Therefore, man needs help. The prophet Isaiah would tell us in Isaiah 59 at verse 2 that our sin separates us from a holy God. God is perfect, has nothing to do with anything sinful. Therefore, for us to be reconciled back to God with the goal of being with him in his presence, in his fellowship for all eternity, man needed help. Help only God could provide. Something had to be done to appease the righteous wrath of God. Now, out of love for his sinful creation, God acted on our behalf, sending his beloved son, leaving the glories of heaven to die in our place, to declare us not guilty, justified. It's amazing, right? You know, for the Jews, the law would not save them. That was never the intention of the law. So Paul brings Abraham into this conversation, no doubt a name from the past that would get the Jews' attention. After all, it was through the seed of Abraham that this great nation, Israel, God's people, they would ultimately come through. But what about Abraham? In the context of what we've been talking about, what would the example of Abraham add to all of this by way of persuading the Jew that they are saved by the grace of God through faith, not by the law, not as a result of being circumcised, being a Jew? Paul is asking the question, how was Abraham justified? Now, remember our definition of that word, justified, is to be declared not guilty, to be acquitted by God. How was Abraham justified? Was it by law or was it by flesh? Well, what was it? Well, look at verse 3 again. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God, it says. Credit to him as righteousness. So that's a quote from Genesis chapter 15 at verse 6. So let's turn over there for a moment, and I want you to look with me at verse 1. Genesis chapter 15, look at verse 1. What preceded, uh, preceded this statement? Uh, look at verse 1. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. So Abram said, verse 2, O Lord God, what will you give me, since I'm childless, and the heir of my house is Azar of Damascus? And Abraham said, Since you have given, since you have given no offspring to me, one born in my house is my heir. Uh, then behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This man will not be your heir, but one who will come forth from your own body, he shall be your heir. And he took him outside and, and, and said, now look toward the heavens and count the stars. If, if you're able to count them. And he said to him, so should your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord. Listen to this. And it reckoned it to him as righteousness. Don't fear, God tells Abram. I'll be your shield. Your reward, it's going to be brave. God promised Abraham an heir. Uh, through that heir that would, would come from his body, he would bless all the nations, obviously, through Jesus in Genesis chapter 12. And God tells this man, who had previously not been blessed with children of his own, who was married to a barren woman, God tells him, look to the sky, count the stars. Obviously, the sky full of stars as far as the eye could see, an abundance. And God tells him, so shall be your descendants. Now, listen to this, no doubt. An outrageous promise, divine, divine human logic. Abraham Believe God, it says. 
not just believed in God, he believed God, believed what God was saying to be true. Abraham, listen, he wasn't perfect. Like us, Abraham was a sinner. But his life was a history of belief, a life of faith, trusting in God, obeying God. This same man in Genesis chapter 12, when Abraham was told to go, to leave his country, to leave his relatives, to go to a land not knowing where he was going, at the age of 75 years old, verse 4 of Genesis 12 tells us he packed up and he went as the Lord had spoken to him. You know, that same quotation, Genesis 15 and verse 6, it's quoted three times in our New Testament. We're not going to take the time, but I would encourage you to look at the context of these quotations. Obviously, here in Romans chapter 4, verse 3, the text that we're dealing with this morning, but also in Galatians 3 at verse 6, and James 2 at verse 23. Now, all three of these instances, when this verse is quoted, they make references to different instances in the life of Abraham, where Abraham's faith was a accompanied by obedience. He was called to obey. With Abraham, brethren, we have an example of a man whose life was characterized not by perfect law keeping, and we'll come back to that, but instead by faith in God, trusting God, a faith that obeyed. Saving faith obeys God. But brethren, let's not lose sight of the context. The context of this chapter is Paul differentiating between one being justified by, by law or justified by a system of grace through faith. So what about Abraham? Well, look at verse uh, 9. For, for his audience, how would Paul convince them that their law keeping would not save them? Look at verse 9. Is this blessing on the circumcised or on the uncircumcised also? For we say faith was accredited to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it credited? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which, he, faith which he had while uncircumcised, so that he might be the father of all who believe without being circumcised. That righteousness might be credited to them. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also follow in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, while he, which he had while uncircumcised. You know, the blessing, the blessing of being forgiven, sins covered, sin not counted against us, as David would describe there in Psalm 32, based on our Lord's faithfulness, the faithful are declared not guilty, right? Was this blessing of forgiveness only for the circumcised, for the Jews? Well, Abraham was credited as righteous before the sin of circumcision. That didn't come until Genesis chapter 17. Abraham was already declared righteous by his faith. He was uncircumcised. God could have told Abraham to be circumcised and then declared him righteous, but he didn't. Circumcision was not God's mechanism by way of declaring one righteous. Verse 11 again, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while uncircumcised, so that he might be the father of all who believe without being circumcised, that righteousness might be credited to them. Abraham, not only the father of the circumcised, but the uncircumcised as well, but only the father to the circumcised who walked in the footsteps of his faith. Brethren and friends, what's the point of all of this? I want to go back to that quotation found in verse 6 of Psalm 32 from the man of God, David. It says, just as David also speaks of the blessing of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works, blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven. And those whose sins have been covered, blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Brethren, how blessed are we? Sinners forgiven by the grace of God. We didn't earn that. We're not saved or forgiven by perfect law keeping. We can't do it. The Jew couldn't do it. We're not saved as a result of the flesh or circumcision. We are saved by grace. Hear me on this. Apart from the grace of God, we cannot earn our salvation. We cannot merit our salvation. We are sinners. We deserve death, Romans 6 and verse 23. But just like Abraham, we walk in his footsteps when we respond to God's grace in obedient faith. Then and only then can we identify with men like Abraham, whom God credited as righteous by his faith. And then we're going to talk more about this next week. But I'll say it again. Just as the Apostle Paul would say in Ephesians chapter 2 at verse 8, we are saved by grace through faith. And let me say this. We are so blessed. Let's continue this conversation 
um, on Monday, all right? Um, take that with you today, though. If you get nothing else out of this, we are blessed. We are not getting what we deserve. Grace. Respond to grace as Abraham did in obedient faith. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, Father, we're so thankful for your grace, for your mercy. Father, we are undeserving of this, as you know. But you love us. You saw us in our need as ungodly, enemies even of yours. But you sent your son anyway to die on the cross for our sins. Father, grace is our why. It compels us to live for you, to be righteous, to help others see your glory. Give us opportunities, Father, to do that. Father, be with Jenny today. She'll get the results from her tests. Father, we, we, we pray for, well, Father, we pray that your will would be done. And Father, we ask if possible that we would get the news that her cancer has not spread. Father, we trust you, and we know that you'll give her everything that she needs. Be with Donald, Father, as he's, too, having issues with his heart. Bless him. Give him the strength that he needs. A tough time for this good family, Father. Bless them. Be with Ellie. Be with Judy. Be with Dad. Um, Father, be with all of those who are struggling with various ailments. Be with your kingdom. May we be united as your people. Certainly, Father, we ask you to be with Ann Sullivan. Father, we pray that um, you would be with her, be with her family, that her faith would remain strong. In Jesus' name we pray.